today, when people think about Title IX, their minds go directly towards collegiate athletics. It wasn't until 1975 that equality within athletics was added to the original Title IX amendments. The additional piece of legislation added to Title IX reads, No person shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, be treated differently from another person or otherwise be discriminated against in any interscholastic, intercollegiate club, or intramural athletics offered by a recipient, and no recipient shall provide any such athletics separately on such basis. The Department of Education enforces the laws of Title IX. Within the collegiate setting, each university is responsible for reporting their own information on an annual basis. Some universities, like the University of Miami, hire individuals called Title IX coordinators to complete these reports. While the reports are not standardized, they must include certain information such as the number of participants, the amount of scholarships given, salary information for head coaches, and revenues and expenses for teams. This information helps determine if a school's athletic department is in compliance with Title IX. The submitted Title IX reports show that the number of female athletes has grown. In 1973, before Title IX included athletics, there were about 300,000 female athletes. In 2012, the number of females participating in athletics had grown to over 3.3 million. Title IX has had the complete opposite effect on female coaches in female athletics. Unfortunately, throughout the 41 years since Title IX has included athletics, the number of female coaches in female athletics has plummeted by 50%. The decline has occurred in colleges and universities all over the country. One of the schools with the highest level of female coaches is the University of Miami. We sat down with a few members of the Keynes family to discuss their thoughts and experiences with Title IX. 